So we're going to make a conductive ink. Now, conductive ink's actually are really easy to make. It's a bit like cookery, to be honest, and there are three main components. There's the active material, which in our case is a conductive material, a binder, which is something to glue the whole lot together and glue it on the substrate you want to paint it on, paper or plastic, and then a carrier, something that keeps it liquid and allows you to do all that uh, painting stuff with it. We're going to choose water as the carrier because, of course, it's really safe and it's really easy to get hold of. Uh, you just turn on your tap or you go dip in your well, whatever it is. The binder that we're going to use in this case is gum arabic because gum arabic is readily available. It's a food substance, actually, and it's totally, totally harmless. So we're going to use gum arabic as the binder and we're going to use water as the carrier. You can use other materials, obviously. There's a whole range of them to investigate. Using gum arabic, which is what's used in watercolours, incidentally, is going to make the thing non-waterproof. So it will wash off. But it makes a very good binder for electronic circuits where you're not expecting it to come into contact with water. If you're expecting it to come into contact with water, you're going to have to use a waterproof binder. Um, something like polyurethane, which is essentially varnish. But there's a whole load of things to investigate. We're going to use gum arabic and water. And to that, we're going to add graphite. Now, this is 5 micron graphite. It's a high quality flake. So it's really uh, going to give a good result in terms of conductivity. And as we're making a conductive ink, conductivity is what we want. That's our function. So when you're making inks, you're looking at the function, you're looking at materials that you can put into a binder with a carrier to make an ink out of it. The conductivity of this ink is going to be directly related to the active material. The more conductive your active material, the more conductive your resulting ink is going to be. Now, this 5 micron graphite is actually very good quality and it's freely available on eBay. Um, they use it as a, a lock lube, I think. You spray it as a powder into locks and you can open the lock. So it's really quite easy to get hold of. Now, the first thing to do is to measure out your water. And the water we need has got to be hot water because we're going to dissolve the binder in the hot water. And we take one litre of hot water. Now, this is obviously just water I boiled in the kettle. And I'm only doing like this so that you can see it. Stick our one litre of hot water in some kind of glass container and add 100 grams of gum arabic. And then just leave that for an hour to disperse. So in one hour, we'll come back to that. OK, so once we've done that, we get this nice amber liquid. This amber liquid, incidentally, is the stuff you would get if you bought the Windsor & Newton gum arabic in the bottle. So it's essentially the same stuff. Now... To that, we need to add a plasticizer, and because it's gum arabic, we need to add a preservative. And the plasticizer is three milliliters of this stuff, glycerin. So you just add three milliliters of glycerin to that. There we go. And our preservative is going to be this stuff, which is oil of cloves. Oil of cloves is wonderful because it's easy to get hold of, and it's a great preservative for this kind of stuff. And to this, you add one milliliter of oil of cloves. And that will stop it rotting in the jar. So just to run through that again, it's 100 millilitres or one uh, litre of hot water, 100 grams of gum arabic, 3 millilitres of glycerin, and 1 millilitre of oil of cloves. That is the binder all ready to go. So all we need to do to that really is add the uh, active material. Now in our case, we're going to add graphite, and we have 300 grams of graphite. This graphite is 5 micron fleck graphite. It's a high quality graphite, so it's going to give a relatively high quality ink. And that's what we want. So we add our 1 litre to a pan because we're going to have to heat this. Heating it ensures dispersion and helps degas it. And that's why we're heating it. So just put it onto the heat and get it hot. When it's hot, obviously, it will begin to boil. And to that, you add your graphite. Now, the graphite won't mix automatically. It'll take a little while, but as it heats up, it will begin to mix. And we stir that for three minutes. So after you've stirred it for three minutes while it's been boiling, that's your ink actually done. Now you need to make sure that you stir out the lumps or you whip out the lumps or something like that so it's not lumpy. But you can use it like that and it's basically done. Now another great preservative actually is this stuff, which is just Listerine. Add about five millilitres of Listerine and that'll stop your gum arabic going off. Now, if you happen to have one of these things, this is really worth using. This is an Indian wet spice grinder. It's basically two stone roll um, rollers that go around a stone base and use it for making curries, that kind of thing. You can buy it on eBay under wet grinder. And what's really important with making these inks and paints is actually the mixing. It's to ensure that everything is mixed properly, and that can be really difficult. 
like I say, you can use this just by hand mixing it and using a blender, but, uh, sorry, not a blender, uh, using a whisk. Uh, a blender is a bit too harsh and it'll make it froth. But if you've got one of these things, it's well worth using one of these things. And all you do is pour it in there, turn it on, add another 500 millilitres of water and give it an hour to grind away. <laughs> So there we are, after an hour of that, what we end up with is this beautiful, beautiful, smooth uh, graphite-based conductive ink. And we're going to pour that out and give it a go. There you go. Isn't that gorgeous? So there it is finished. Now it is what it is. It's a conductive ink and it's with gum arabic as a binder so it's not waterproof. If you want to change that and use a different binder, use something like polyurethane, it probably will change the conductivity. Uh, it doesn't sing, it doesn't dance, it just does what it says on the tin and that is conduct electricity. So if we paint a square onto this piece of paper we can get some idea of what the conductivity is actually like. So we paint a square on that and then leave it to dry. Now, in great Blue Peter fashion, here's one I did earlier. So I painted a square and I left it to dry and there it is all finished and nice. Now we need some details out of this and the primary details you want are the conductivity per square per mil. Now, measurement of square resistance or sheet resistance is a, uh, normally done with the four point probe method. But there is a much simpler method you can duplicate at home using a square probe. The distance here of the copper bars is the same as the distance the copper bars are apart, so it gives us a square resistance. And that's going to be the same with this one centimetre squared or one metre squared. And it's just a homemade way of getting an idea of how your ink is going to actually perform. So we've painted the ink on this bit of paper and then we just take a measurement of it and see what we've got. We're getting a resistance of 121 ohms. Pretty cool. But we need to make that comparable. Now, when you're looking at, at making these comparables, you're not looking at just the square resistance because it is an ink and it does have thickness. So the normal measure is per square per mil. So it's ohm resistance per square per mil, and we want some way of normalizing that. Now, I'm going to use a um, paint thickness meter. So we can measure the thickness of the paper. Zero the meter based on that. And then we can measure the thickness of that and it will automatically take one from the other and give me the thickness of the uh, ink that I've just applied. And that is 10. So it's 10 micrometers thick. Let's give us 10.1. So we know that's 10 micrometers thick. Now a mil is at 25 micrometers thick. So we take our reading, which is 121, divide by 25, giving us per mil, multiply by 10, and we get a square resistance of uh, 48.4 ohms per square per mil. Which is not bad when you think that that's just made from graphite and gum arabic. Actually, it's pretty cool. The um, competing cheap inks are much more than that. So that's kind of a nice result. Now, obviously, I can't resist showing you ours. So here is the FWG uh, working ink, conductive ink. And we do exactly the same thing, different piece of paper, so we'll zero it. And then we measure the thickness of the ink film. 
and that's actually 0.5 of a micrometre thick. The reason is that it's just a thinner paint. When we paint it down, it's quite gloopy and quite thick, so it leaves a um, much thicker coat. This is a much thinner paint, so when we paint it on, it's a much thinner. It still has the same binder in, so this particular one is done with a gum arabic binder because I wanted a straight one-to-one -one comparison. And if we take the square resistance reading of that, we get 98 ohms. So that's 98 ohms per square for that thickness. So same thing, 98 divided by 25 multiplied by 0.5 gives us a square resistance of 1.96 ohms per square per mil. So I am showing off a little bit that um, the working ink ink obviously is much, much better than the homemade version by a order of magnitude or two, so it's much better. Uh, but the homemade ink version is just one that you can make at home all by yourself, really quite cheap, should cost you about £15 a litre or so, and if you want to get into conductive inks, then it's a good way to start. Obviously, you can change that by changing the binders. Anyway, I thought I'd show you how to make quite a nice ink, and um, if you don't want to get the uh, working ink, FWG working ink, no need at all, just make your own. Anyway, I hope that was of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.